Hi, you're watching Weekly World Climate Change News. Europe is preparing a new fleet of three satellites which will defect CO2 emissions at each point on Earth, making the first global system to independently track polluters. The three satellites are scheduled for launch in 2025. When in orbit, the satellites will create a global observation system for the greenhouse gas most accountable for global warming. The project has great influences for the Paris Climate Agreement and global policies of pollution. Other satellites will be launched from China, Japan and US. The data will bring a new element of responsibility to global carbon pollution. Jakarta, Indonesia's capital city, is testing out electrical vehicles as a green initiative to reduce air pollution. Governor Anis Bezwiren plans to transform Jakarta from one of the most polluted cities in the world into one of the greenest. To achieve this goal, Trans-Jakarta Bus Rapid Transit System has introduced electric buses on certain routes. Currently killing 7 million people every year globally, air pollution can be quickly reduced by adopting electric mobility. This is one of the 25 solutions proposed by the UN Environment and the Climate and Clean Air Coalition, which aim to bring clean air to 1 billion people by 2030. In July 2018, Japan's heat wave killed 1,032 people after temperature rose to 41.1 Celsius, the highest temperature ever recorded in Japan. Torrential heat waves caused landslides and the worst floods in decades. The heat wave could not have occurred without climate change induced by human activity, according to a study by the Meteorological Society of Japan. The study was part of the extreme weather attribution field that tracks human fingerprint of climate change on severe weather occurrences such as floods, storms, droughts and heat waves. Following China's ban on plastic scarf imports, last year Malaysia became the top final destination for plastic waste from the West. Now Malaysia too has announced it will no longer tolerate illegal trash to be imported into the country and is sending back 3,000 tons of plastic waste to where it originally came from. Among the countries which have been illegally dumping their plastic waste in Malaysia are the United States, Japan, France, Canada, Australia and Britain. Yeo, the Malaysian Environment Minister, has urged developed countries to start better managing their refuse and firmly inform that any piece of trash sent to Malaysia will be returned. As Asia's glaciers have been shrinking 1.6 times faster in the last 15 years, many drought-prone areas might soon be left without water. One of these in the Indus Valley, which provides food for 237 million people. Drought might also affect population in Asia's high mountain regions, where 6 million people have already been killed by water shortages. Drought brings conflicts as people are forced to compete for resources and causes displacement. Overall, it had been estimated that changes to glacier melt could impact as many as 800 million people. The air quality in Delhi is bad and ranks among the top 10 most polluted cities in the world. Faced with a toxic smog that engulfs Delhi during winter time, Jasmine Shah realized the city needs a more long-term measure to tackle air pollution and the hazardous particulate matter in India. It urged Shah to create momentum for policy change and more electric buses. Targeting public transport seems like the most logical way to start, with potential for bigger impact than tackling individuals. In 2016, Delhi became the first city in India to launch a very successful odd-even scheme as an emergency measure to restrict the movement of private vehicles on polluted days. In 2018, a report by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change warned that humanity needs to cut its carbon dioxide emissions in half by 2030 to avoid global warming of 1.5 Celsius above the levels seen before the Industrial Revolution. This means that we have 12 years before fixing climate change becomes really expensive and tough. To avoid doom scenarios, it is important to reduce the impact of climate change and to build resilience. For example, by producing more local energy and build better backup systems. Over 500 students, both Arab Palestinians and Jewish Israels, marched and protested together before Nasset in Jerusalem on Tuesday, May 28th. Despite their political conflicts, Israelis and Palestinians focused on saving the planet from a continuing climate breakdown. Climate change is a cu crucial crisis which not only affects the biological, ecological and environmental aspects, but also humanitarian and particularly economic distress. 
the teens are also planning a social media campaign with celebrities, along with several newspaper and television interviews. In Australia, environmentalists gave up an Australian labor lost in the climate war since it refused to subsidize new mining infrastructure. On the other side of the world, the European Union parliamentary election started on Thursday with an emerging consensus to set EU net zero emission target by 2050. In India, climate change had little profile in the campaign and the manifesto of the Congress party treating air pollution as a public health emergency made no progress. In Russia, Arshak Makichian, a young environmental activist, is solely protesting over global warming. Israeli and Palestinian youth have put aside their differences to focus on climate action. You've been watching Weekly World Climate Change News. My name is Katarina Velkov and we hope you will join us next week.